We're going to look at a first-hand investigation of testing physical properties of materials. Here you've got some guy squeezing what appears to be silicone. What you notice is when you squeeze it, it deforms, and then after X amount of time, it'll expand and form the original shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to test materials, or I'm going to explain how to test physical properties of materials in a little bit more of a rigorous way compared to just you know, squeezing it. So the first one we're going to test is electrical conductivity. So what we're going to do is we're going to test samples of magnesium ribbon, zinc foil, graphite rods, sulfur crystals, iodine crystals, and iron nails. So we're going to test these guys to see their electrical conductivity. The method basically is easy. All you have to do is set up a simple series circuit, 12 volt globe, 12 volt power supply, and our sample. And all we're going to do is we're going to see what comes out on this device. Then the light bulb will be either bright or not very bright or off. It will be a continuous scale, you'll see off, dim, getting brighter. So what we do is we just test the conductivity of each element by touching the probes each end of the sample. And you just clip them together onto the sample. And observe the brightness of the globe. And then all you have to do is classify each of the elements as a conductor or a non-conductor. Does it conduct or doesn't it? And then you just tabulate your results. Your typical results would be that the magnesium, zinc, iron, and graphite are all good conductors. The brightest glow will be the one that's the best conductor. The sulfur and iodine, of course, are non-metals, so they're electrical insulators in crystal form, and so the globe won't light up sulfur or iodine. So those are typical results that you'll see. Another one is testing the malleability and hardness of material. The whole point of malleability is what this guy's doing here, smithing something that it's made out of is malleable. If you heat it and then hit it, it will form the right shape. So to compare the malleability of various elements is our goal. And to classify elements as malleable, brittle, hard, or soft. What we're going to do is we're going to use lead sinkers, zinc granules, graphite rods, and copper wire. We're going to test their malleability by hammering them gently. Basically, we're just going to hit them and see what happens. And then we can classify them as malleable or brittle, hard or soft. This is a qualitative measure. Lead is often malleable and soft. It's such a soft metal, it actually deforms very easily. Now here we have zinc. Zinc is malleable, but it's harder than lead. So it's harder to shape, it's harder to beat into the correct shape than lead is. Lead is really soft, but zinc is a lot harder, but it's still malleable. Now graphite, if you've ever snapped a pencil in half, you'll notice that the graphite is pretty brittle. If you were to hit a graphite rod, it will shatter. So it doesn't do well with stress, it just shatters. The copper wires and copper sheets illustrate the ductility and malleability of copper. When we look at the copper wires, they actually show us the properties of copper very well. It's a relatively soft metal because it's readily shaped by a ball hammer. You can actually deform it very easily. The copper wire itself shows you how well it can be drawn into wire. If you try it, copper can be deformed much more easily than say something like iron. Those are some typical things that you'll see. So that concludes today's lesson on the first-hand investigation of you know, testing the properties of materials. We looked at two first-hand investigations, the testing the electrical conductivity, as well as testing malleability and hardness. So we'll move on to the question segment now, and we'll see if we can answer some questions on this. In the investigation of electrical conductivity, identify the independent variable. When we talk about experiments or first-hand investigations, this is really important, knowing which one's the independent variable and the dependent variable. So in the investigation, which one's the independent variable? Well, it's the one that we have control over. And what do we have control over and we change? Well, we change the sample, the actual metal. So that will be our independent variable because it's the one we change and we have full control over. So it's the metal sample in this case. Now, from that, what is the dependent variable? The dependent variable uh, is the one that changes when you change the independent variable. So in maths, we have something like y equals 2x. If we change x, x is what we call our independent variable because we change x however we want. And that's our metal sample. If we change x to 1, y becomes 2. Change x to 3, y becomes 6. You can see that as soon as we change the independent variable, the dependent variable changes. So now the question becomes, well, what changes when we change the metal sample? Obviously, it's the electrical conductivity of the circuit or the brightness of the globe, the amount of current going through the, the circuit essentially is what changes. So the brightness of the globe is our dependent variable. 
or if we're using the ammeter, the current reading. The amount of current going through the circuit is our dependent variable. So from the results of the investigation, what would you expect about the electrical conductivity of the gold element? So what we're doing here is we're extrapolating. That sounds like a really big fancy word, but essentially what we're doing is we're sort of saying, well, now that we've done a small experiment, why don't we try thinking about what would happen if we expanded that experiment to include all the metal, all of the elements of this particular class. So what we noticed in this investigation is that the metals conduct electricity very well. So we expect by extrapolation that gold should, because it's a metal, should also conduct electricity very well. Now, since gold is a metal, we expect it to have a high electrical conductivity. And additionally, we saw that malleability is also high in the metals, so we would expect it to be also very malleable. Gold, that is. Gold has one of the highest electrical conductivities in all of the metal, so that's true. And it's also really quite malleable, quite soft. Now, extrapolation is not often, a good, often used. It's not a good experimental technique, but we use it a lot because it allows us to make smaller experiments to include other things. Don't try to use extrapolation as your first technique. Try to use it as your last. For the electrical conductivity investigation, what are some of the controlled variables? So what are we keeping the same? An experiment has to have controlled variables, otherwise it's not valid. So for instance, what I mean by that is, if I was to take a piece of copper that was maybe a hair thin piece of copper, and I was to test the electrical conductivity of that, and I compared it with something like iron, and I had an iron wire that was this thick, that's not a fair comparison of the properties of those two metals because the copper is actually has a much higher conductivity. But I've only given you a hair thin wire. Obviously, it's going to have a lower conductivity compared to this super fat wire that I've garnered from somewhere. So we need to keep certain variables the same. Otherwise, our experiment doesn't have any validity to it. Things that we want to keep the same, the voltage supplied to the circuit. So obviously, if I put 12 volts across one sample, and then decide and then measure the current and then decide, you know what, I'm going to put 2000 volts over the next sample. Obviously, the current will be different. That's not a valid test. So those are extreme cases, but it helps to illustrate what I'm trying to get at here. The circuit design has to be the same across each test. You can't move things around, can't change the layout. You've got to keep that the same. The light bulb and ammeter model have to be the same. So some are more sensitive than others. Maybe the light bulb is more sensitive. So you've got to keep that the same. Other things that you might be able to keep the same, but you might not be able to as well, is the actual geometry of the sample. For instance, if I have a ribbon of magnesium, I want ribbons of all the other chemicals as well. What variables should be controlled, but may not be, in order to improve the validity of this investigation? So in this question, well, it's what I said right at the end. What are some of the things that we should keep control of, but due to certain restrictions on our resources, we can't keep them the same? But if we could keep them the same, that would increase the validity of our experiment. So what are those things that we could keep, if we could keep the same, would make our experiment better? The dimension of the sample, like I mentioned, if we could get the geometry the same for each one, that would really help. Because like I mentioned, you could have a very thin wire or a really fat wire, and that could change things. So the resistivity of the sample could be significantly changed by changing the dimensions of the sample. Fat wire compared to thin wire will be very different. So that concludes today's lesson on these first-hand investigations. So we looked at the electrical conductivity investigation, as well as the malleability and hardness investigation. So hopefully you've learned something about testing these things. And more importantly, hopefully you've learned something about the experimental method. In future lessons, we'll look at the periodic table and how properties can be mapped onto the periodic table. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.